uh, all of this is money laundering, right? So let's just clarify that college athletics is mon money laundering. That's what it is. Uh, and so you just pick and choose where your money is directed to. And so the NCAA says you have to have 85 full scholarships, right? And and wrestling's the same way. We can have this, like, wrestling has, what, nine scholarships that they, right? Mm -hmm. And But instead of using nine scholarships, they break it up into other players. And so they, like, you don't actually get a full scholarship necessarily if you're a wrestler. Football's the same way. Let's move on. Let's 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 move on uh, to something a little lighter, and that's the transfer portal. We'll get back to the blue white game here in a second, but the transfer portal opens uh, tomorrow, guys. I think so. Oh, yeah. uh, let's give a primer to everyone watching about the transfer portal and what is about to happen. And I'm going to start with this in the chat because Nate, I want you to once again. I've seen this two or three times on the internet. Uh, please explain to people that this is not exactly where we are when it comes to the transfer portal. Chad says, uh, not not picking on you, Chad. There are they also uh, the elephant in the room that over 10 guys are going to have to make room on for scholarships. So Penn State will have to weather that next storm. Penn State, we've talked about this a bunch of times. They're over scholarships. Everyone wants to know how they're getting to under the scholarship limit. Are they going to have to cut 10 players in order to make room for the 85 scholarship limit? No. Okay, why? Because it's, uh, all of this is money laundering, right? So let's just clarify that college athletics is mon money laundering. That's what it is. Uh, and so you just pick and choose where your money is directed to. And so the NCAA says you have to have 85 full scholarships, right? And, and wrestling's the same way. We can have this, like wrestling has what, nine scholarships that they, right? Mm -hmm. And, but instead of using nine scholarships, they break it up into other players. And so they like, you don't actually get a full scholarship necessarily. If you're a wrestler football is the same way. Okay. Yeah. They're going to have 85 full ride scholarships for sure. But NIL changed things. And even before NIL, I think that there were some things, whether Penn state was doing it or not, but uh, right there, it's a uh, creative accounting, right? Today's tax day, creative accounting, right? You figure, <laughs> you figure, yeah. You figure you figure out where your tax breaks are. You figure out uh, what are what are the things that we can maximize the rules to the the best of our ability. And in the NIL era, the best way to do that is to say, "Hey, kid who is not on scholarship but has played really well and has earned a scholarship, we we don't we don't have a scholarship for you in the traditional sense, but you're going to get paid from the collective." the amount or more that that scholarship's value is. And so there, I do think that there are some implications, right? Once you get into fits, you can correct me on this, like preseason camp, there's numbers, there's right in terms of how many players they can have in preseason camp that in that messes up walk-ons that can be there, that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's a, there's a cap on numbers for preseason camp that I believe they just e expanded to, to 120. It was at 110. So every year you get a couple of guys, whether it be injured guys, maybe freshmen or something like that, um, that just don't make the roster, that come on. Uh, I believe the first day of classes is when they're allowed to come on. Gotcha. But that's not going to impact the the 10 over, right? Or whatever it is, whatever they end That's up roster at. roster spots, not scholarship, not the 85 that we've become accustomed to. Yeah, the, the 80, just, just forget the 85, right? It, does it exist in reality? Yes. For practical purposes, does it exist? No. If Penn State, the football program, wants to have a player on its roster, it can do that. <laughs> no matter, they no matter won't, what the full they scholarship. won't talk about it the the james no, franklin won't. asked about this so if you if you want to know yeah. get the information this is all this is all the game now right nate this is the this is the transfer portal game how do we maximize the benefit right so yeah. and and i think that i think that in some ways it can include reshuffling guys who may have had a scholarship at one point in their career too right uh, yeah. in, in the sense that when they do those they do those surprise videos every August and it's like, oh man, you're on scholarship and you weren't before. Well, you, you might not be after the season. And that yeah. was always, that was always the case, uh, right? That, that it was kind of a one-year deal. 
I think that I think that that is yeah that's it. I have nothing. It, more to it's going to be a sheet turned in at some point that has eighty five names on it. Says this is our scholarship, guys. Trust us. And that's what well, you got. <laughs> and and even even on the technical level, like I, I think that there's a disconnect with what people understand of how room and board is paid out. Right? Mm-hmm. Like you get a check. You get a check from the university that has the number of what the maximum value of room and board on Penn State's campuses. So the highest meal plan, all all of that stuff, you get a check for that. And so what you see with a lot of other athletes, not football necessarily, and football does the same thing, but you you get the maximum amount of check that you can, and then you spend it on the least amount that you possibly can for rent. So one way, one way, for instance, to work around this is if you've got a deal with whatever, one of the, one of the development companies or apartment companies in state college as right. An NIL deal, right. You don't pay rent, right. For the place that you're living in, but also you get, you still get a check for room and board. Right. And so that's just, a, it's a, it's a creative accounting way to work around what the NIL deal is. So in this case, you're just getting paid by it. it it's the mafia. That's, yeah. that's all it is. is it, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just the cigarettes fell off the back of the truck. Like that's, <laughs> that's what this is at this point. For people uh, listening on the podcast, Jacob uh, Reynolds here in the chat, I think described this perfectly. He says, my God, can we just get collective bargaining already? I am over this. Because, Nate, you're going two or three levels deep on how to game the system and how to max it. Like, there are – I'm not surprised that you are getting more and more people filtering into college football around all of this stuff because how is a a college player supposed to focus on being the best athlete and student possible while also having all the information about how to handle all this stuff? And I'm sure there's probably some people at Penn State who can direct you in the right – blah, 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 all those things. But there's so many different hoops to jump through here that have nothing to do with football. They have nothing to do with basketball, sports in general. Um, let's get a little bit back towards the transfer portal. Uh, Fitz, you mentioned. I thought you were taking us into an ad read there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're we're clear. We're clear for now. Um, the So 85 is not the problem here. 85 is not the number. But that doesn't mean there won't be an exodus of players given the football side of things that happened over the weekend. So uh, Keandre Lambert-Smith, we've talked about him, the likely first portal entry we know of. And again, definitely happening, but journalistically, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it does. We have to clarify that he's not officially in the portal to our knowledge. Are, what are you looking for in terms of portal movement from the team and kind of give us a, a guideline of how to read the next couple of days and maybe week? So number one with Keandre, I believe he's finishing up his degree this spring. Okay. And that means he can't go in until tomorrow, until Tuesday, because he's not a graduate transfer. So this window is open for non-graduate transfers. If you're a graduate transfer, you can go in whenever. Um, But no, this is a situation where a lot of the football aspect, more so than the money aspect of it, from I think from a Penn State state point of view, a lot of football aspect. You watch the spring game this week. There's a depth chart. You know, there's a lot of guys stacked in a lot of positions. When you're over that 85, which Again, not meaningful at this point. When you're over that 85, it means you got a lot of bodies on that roster, which means guys are going to get filtered to the bottom that they want to look in at better deci- or more uh, better decisions for themselves. I guess we can say. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's I more think opportunity, we're maybe. Yeah, opportunity is the the word that was escaping me there. That would that, yeah, that would have been much better. Um, <laughs> but I think there's so it's interesting looking at recruiting, looking at portal. Like we talk, some people just want to say recruiting is all in IL now. A big chunk of it is not. A big chunk of it is the stuff, the conversations that we've always had. It's just that, you know, it, it seems different because there are guys that are turning, whose recruitments turn on a dime and you can point at it and pretty clearly say it's NIL. That's not for everybody. I don't know. I want to put a percentage on it, but also in the transfer portal, like there will be guys across the country that will go out and look for the best potential deal to benefit them, the best opportunity to benefit themselves, both financially, playing time, all that kind of stuff. But there's still a football aspect to it. These guys still want to play football. They're still on this roster. They're still providing a role that maybe they don't think is good enough. And that's that's a conversation that goes back no matter who the coach is at Penn State, I mean, yeah. no matter what's, uh, which 
college you're playing at across the country. So there's still elements of this stuff because I think we want to you know, we throw our hands up and say it's all transfer portal, it's all NIL, everything's ruining the sport, sport's broken, whatever. Um, but there's still elements of what you've always watched that are in there. So I think that that's yeah. what you're going to see. Um, top of the line guys in uh, m- m- mainly talking about national college football, top of the line guys are going to go in and it's going to be bidding wars. It's going to be free agency. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But the majority of guys that go into the portal are coming off the bottom of your depth chart. And I think that that's what we're going to see right now is how do you adjust at receiver? You've got three receivers coming in. You got 15 scholarships. I know that we just talked to you for five minutes about how scholarships don't matter, but it's, it's roster building. It's roster structure yeah. and things like that. So how does receiver evolve? How do these positions where you've got a lot of guys where, you know, you look at corner, um, you've got six guys that you think can play reality of the situation there, you know, it, probably not going to have a six man rotation at corner. Mm-hmm. Tight end is really good. Re- running backs really good. So you've got these spots where these uh, position, that position churn, that attrition that we see every year is coming along. And then you add to that, that Penn state didn't have much turnover uh, as much turnover as we thought it would in the winter period with Christian driver, Alex Paquetta, uh, Ibrahim Traor, you know, the, the list was very short and not mm-hmm. surprising, I guess you could say. So I think that that's what you're setting up for as a Penn state fan to see some of that typical attrition more so than, you know, if there's a shock move, I mean, you can't write anything off here because yeah. this is a different age, a different era and things like that. If there's a shock move, so be it. But like the, yeah. the majority of the portal turn, I think is going to be a little, a little bit lower on the, on the, on the sites there. We're not going to get into individual players or anything like that. That would be inappropriate for us to just randomly speculate about stuff like that. But a general rule would be if it's a guy who you didn't see a whole lot of during the blue white game, but still played and, and, you know, kind of, those depth chart conversations, maybe those are the areas you you would look at in terms of where to expect a guy to go into the portal. But Nate, this is the this is the perpetual conversation this time of year to fold yeah. back in on NIL and kind of put a a cap on this conversation so we can get back to talking about dudes in the blue white game. Uh, what's the threat here? Another year into NIL, that portal inducement can happen of players seeking monetary windfall from other schools not necessarily tied to what we just talked about with Fitz. Re- rephrase the question what is the threat like yeah how yeah is penn state insulated enough from other schools no. coming in and buying nope. players off their roster nope <laughs> okay no they're not uh it that's not yeah good. it but no, that's well. Look, that's just that's that's constantly the case, and they talk about it. You are re-recruiting your your current roster right now. That that is today, tomorrow, Wednesday, right? James went through all of the the schedule, and then he's going to have three weeks of individual player meetings. But that's what has been happening really throughout the spring. Is you are trying to convince your current players to come back. I hate to go to basketball, but like Ace Baldwin still hasn't made an announcement, right? He still hasn't decided uh, publicly what he's going to do. That there, this is just this is just where it is, and you don't have to go into the portal, like right? We we understand that. Is it technically against the rules to tamper and to to have other schools be involved with your players of course it's technically against the rules no yeah. one cares no one cares that's what's happening right now is you have players or representatives from the school whatever who have other represent that's how basketballs work for forever and now i think you're seeing more of it in the college football game where you everybody has handlers agents what have you that serve as middlemen and can get a grasp on what the hypothetical offer is right yeah. what, what it's not hypothetical it's real this is yeah <laughs> this is what it's supposed to be so yeah you're you are constantly having to fend off those threats and some of that also includes purposeful bidding up of a player mm-hmm. so, so that it costs you said so it costs you more gotcha. to keep them well, that's fun. There's another there's another layer to the game, um, and there's not a GM uh, for for sports yet. So, uh, 